Hey, what is up everybody, it's Franz here, and welcome to the tutorial on how to create your own hardcore Minecraft server. So first thing is first, head over to minecraft.net, head over to the download now button, and download this. So it doesn't matter what Minecraft version is on, as long as it's 1.7 onwards. So download that, and I created a folder, just here, Minecraft server, and put the jar file into the folder here. So it would have been named dot one. 0.7 dot whatever so just rename that down to minecraft underscore server um, it may display the jar dot jar like this make sure you keep that if it doesn't display when you click re rename just leave it to minecraft server and make sure it's named an executable jar file just there so next thing is to create yourself a text document here doesn't matter what you name it go into the text document and you want to copy this little bit of code here from minecraft not including the full stop and paste that here into the text document. So depending on how much RAM you want to start the server up with, you just edit here, this, this num these numbers here. So 2048 is two gigabytes of RAM, which would be more than enough for a little local server. You don't need to give it any more because you won't really use that much unless you're hosting a big server on your computer. So then you just click save, save as, and you want to just name that as startup.bat and you change the save as type to all files and just hit save. You can exit out of the notepad there, delete that file named S, and what you need to do is just double click startup, like so, and you're gonna wait for the server to generate all its files that it needs. So whilst it's generating that, open up Minecraft, as I've got already here, and go into multiplayer, and then you wanna add your server. So you just add your IP if you're connected into a server elsewhere, or if you're you're wanting to connect on your server like if you're hosting the server on your computer so you just type in local host and it connects it directly in your computer so you have no ping basically next no ping which is pretty good so you have no lag whatsoever so the server's loaded up and then you just connect into your server so upon logging into the minecraft world up above this tree that will be perfect to test out Yes, there is a couple of commands that you'll be needing to type in. The first command will basically turn the server into the so-called hardcore mode that we are trying to do. So the first command is so you type in slash game rule space natural regeneration and then this is the boolean right here. So false will turn off natural regeneration. So when your hunger is full now and you take heart damage, normally in Minecraft you'd regenerate. Setting this to fault means you do not regener regenerate from having full hunger bars. The only way to regenerate is from health potions, from golden apples, and anything that can put a regeneration on you or heals you instantly. So, click that on. Game rule has now been updated. First off though, when you first do this, you need to opt yourself. So, as I was already opt on the server, you first type in, in the console, OP, and then you enter in your player name. So that will say that I am now opt, and it will allow me to do every single command, like the command I have just done, but I was already opt. The other commands that we have to do is, they're optional, you don't have to do them, but they add, basically add to the server and make them a lot better. The first one will put a, um, we'll put a number right next to the ping bar that you see there, displaying how many deaths you have, and the next one will put like a little sidebar here, displaying how many deaths each and every player that is logged into the server has. So the first command is we'll put in the death counter here next to the ping bar. So first you need to create death or like basically make it so the server can track how, what the deaths are. So you type in slash score, board, and space objectives, space again, add, then capital D, deaths, and then death count, like so. So that has now added the objective deaths to be tracked by the scoreboard. Next you type in slash scoreboard, Ooh, scoreboard, objectives, you can't type objectives, set display list deaths. And there we go. So now it displays the number and how many deaths I have. So we can give that a test if I just type slash kill. Like so, and look, now it's displaying number one because I have died once. The next one will display the little bar here and to activate that you type slash scoreboard, objectives, set display sidebar deaths and now it displays the player name and the amount of deaths he has and what they are so deaths there 
So that displays those. So if I die again, those numbers will go up. And if you click tab here, so basically what you could do, you, you don't have to have this one activated. You could just have the one that activates when you click tab. So you only see players who are online and only the players online. So basically whoever's online, you can see how many times they've died. If they're offline, you can't see how many times they've died. Whereas with this, you can see how many times they've died when they're offline. So if you've got like a giant server, the best bet would be to put the one on right next to the ping there when the player's online. If you're running like a little local server or just a couple players, this would be the best one to use, or both of them. The next command that you want to enter in will basically make it a lot better for both online servers, maybe for a bit of PvP. You don't have to have this activated or if you just want to see how much health another player has. So basically what this will do, normally you have your player name just above here, it will basically put your player name here and just below it it will put your health, so how much health you have in hearts. And that up, is up to a number of 20. So if I take one heart damage, it will say number 19 underneath, basically, of how many hearts I have left. So to enable that, you first need to basically make the scoreboard be, being able to track health. So you type slash scoreboard, objectives, add health, health. So that's now added that to the scoreboard. And then you type slash scoreboard, objectives, set display, below name, health. And now that will display it. Although I won't be able to test it at the moment, it will display it. And if you see another player, they'll have their health below their names. So that is basically turned the server into the hardcore mode. So if I were to jump off here, woohoo, I shall not regenerate. I will not regenerate any health. And then slowly as I take more damage, more damage, it slowly builds up until you die. And then you've got to respawn and collect all your items again and go from there. So that just basically makes the starting of Minecraft a lot more hardcore. And it makes it so you're a little bit more cautious when going around and attacking mobs. Because Minecraft has been getting gradually easier. So this just makes it a lot harder and makes you a lot more aware of what's around you. So you can go and attack that creeper and you've got to be careful on how to attack that creeper. You don't just go attack it, get blown up half health and then just regenerate the health quickly. Nope, you get blown up half health, that half health stays there and will come back to haunt you one day when you get another death added to your score there. So now just log out of Minecraft. Next thing that we're going to do is go back into the server properties here and go through all the different options a bit more in depth just because you, you need to learn how to use all these different options. So through here, don't, you don't need to touch that, that allows nether here, you can change the folder name, so whatever, you say if you're named as the world one, this will basically create a, fo a world called world one, so if I change that to world one, it would not use this world here, we have regenerated, it will create a new world. So you can have another world saying, e epic castle, and then, yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll create a folder named Epic Castle and that will be your world. So just change that back. Next option, Query, that's if you're on like a um, game host and that will basically make it so that you can track how many players are online on your server and so forth. Allow Flight, doesn't, you don't really need that unless you're using third party mods or bucket for flying. Uh, announce Play Achievements, this is something that can be annoying because currently the achievements in Minecraft are very buggy. You say you've create to the crafting table two times and suddenly on your third time crafting oh you suddenly got an achievement for crafting a crafting table yay a bit late yeah you could it's best to probably set that to false if you don't want to spam in the chat so much server ports leave that at the default 25565 level type so you can change this to like a flat world you can change it to um like extremely large biomes so like large biomes and you can also change it to Minecraft's new biome type of generator, which is like extreme biomes, like it massively enhances every single biome. Not sure what the command for that would be, but I'll list it in the description, all the different ones that you can use for level types. Archon, Recon, or whatever it is, don't know what that is. Force game mode, so anyone that joins the server from down here will be forced into, say, survival mode. They won't just stay in creative. So if they join, the, if they get made creative in the, whilst they're in the server, they leave and they come back. They'll, if you have this true, they'll be forced back into survival mode as soon as they join back, which can be pretty good. Level seed, you enter in the level seed and when you regenerate a world, it will use that seed. So for example, you have a nice seed that you want to play your hardcore world on. You just enter that in here. Server IP, you can leave that blank for the time being. Generally, if you're on a web host or like a game host online, you they enter the IP in here automatically. Max build height, 256, you can leave that. You can leave that the same. 
Okay, whitelist. You can have this either enabled or disabled. Having it enabled will allow you to basically track who can come on online on your server, so you can only have your friends coming on. For example, variants, variants 1 and variants 2 will only be allowed on the server. Variants 3 and 4 won't be allowed on. So you can have that enabled or disabled. Generally, if you're just running it on your computer, a little hardcore server, someone else isn't exactly going to get your IP and join your Minecraft server unless you tell them. So you can just leave that to false. But if you're running a public server and you want it to be whitelisted, having that enabled so you can only allow people you want on the server would be a good option. So spawn animals, if you don't want animals, you can set that to false. Snooper, hardcore mode. The reason why we're not using this hardcore mode is because if you enable this, it basically pushes the whole world into hardcore mode. So as soon as you die, you get banned from the server, which you do not want, especially with the no regeneration, because that will be extremely hard. I mean, you're not going to get one death, and you're going to suddenly create yourself a brewing stand and get all this gold. That creeper's not going to creep up behind you that one time and blow you up. Because once you've set this to true, true, you can't set it to false. So if you set this to true and generate a world, that world is basically labeled as a hardcore world, and you can't set that back. You can't. So anyone that joins that world and dies is banned from it. You can unban them, and they can join back, but then, yeah, they die again, they get banned again, and yeah, you can't change it back from the hardcore mode. Online mode, pff, offline, probably can use like cracked clients, but generally you just leave that true. Resource packs, mm, you can leave that blank. PvP, if you want to be able to attack your friends or attack other people you can leave that true or set that to false difficulty goes from one being really easy two being normal and three being difficult so you can set that to one if you want an easy hardcore mode medium hardcore mode or hard hardcore mode let's leave that three command blocks just leave that as true it's, it just doesn't harm leaving it as true because if you ever want to create a command block to do certain things for example a healing command block for a type of map that you've got you can just click the command block and it will work because if you don't have this enabled you won't be able to use command blocks in your game player idle timeout so say every if the player is afk for one minute they get kicked yeah you can have that enabled if you really want to but generally it's not very good to have that enabled it could be annoying for players if they go afk to the toilet or something this is the default game mode zero being survival one being creative and two being adventure if i'm correct Max players, you can leave that just as it is now. Spawn monsters, if you're monsters in your game, obviously you do if you're playing hardcore mode. View distance, just leave that as the default one there. If you your upload speed is a bit slow and your players are lagging, you can change the view distance down, and that'll basically it will change how many chunks generate around a player. So changing it to about five, halving it if your players are lagging on your server a little bit might help a little bit. That's generally ping lag if you're hosting it on your computer. Generate structures, spawn protection, you can leave that at zero, and then message of the day. So as you can see here, if you change the message of the day here, that displays underneath your Minecraft server. So variance is awesome, Minecraft server. There we go. That's where the message of the day will be displayed at. So yeah, that is the basic server properties. You can save that. Ops, this is where you add people who can have every single command in your server and do anything they want. Just the next line will add a player's name, like so, like so. Don't need to save that. Whitelist, this is where you add your players in, as I showed earlier. So you just add the names in here. You can also type in game slash whitelist add and then the player name, so variants three, like so. And then you can remove them, so whitelist remove variants two, for example, like that. And you can do whitelist, I think it's whitelist on or whitelist off in game. You can turn the whitelist on and off as you please. And yeah, lastly, banned players and IPs. This, unless someone's been banned that you want to unban, you can just literally type slash unban and then variants in game, or you can just come into this file here and just delete them and restart the server and they'll be unbanned. So generally that is everything you need to do to set yourself up with a hardcore Minecraft server. In the future, I'll be doing a tutorial on how to set up a, with Bucket, so you can have all different plugins that can help you set up a more advanced hardcore server. And I'll also be doing tutorials on how to set up in the future um, uh, modded Minecraft servers, so maybe to create your own little mod pack or how to use mods in your server with Bucket as well. So you can have plugins to protect your server and make a public modded server with your own mod pack. 
So anyways, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see future tutorials. Um, please like this video if you like it. Comment below if you have any questions. I'll be glad to help and I will see you for the next tutorial.